often do we not actually nurture ourselves? Right. And so if you give yourself, and it, you could do three days, whatever you choose, but that one hour a day, knowing that that's just for you, it's not for anyone or anything else, then you start to be, what I notice is, I start to be more present with myself and I start to have more of a sense of peace. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in and for showing up. From myself and my team, we hope that you are all staying safe and healthy as you navigate the changes and the challenges and what we're calling this new normal. And you know, we're here every single week. We show up with the guests, the stories, the inspiration, the motivation, and the advice to help you. So please keep the feedback coming and the conversations going. And I do want to get started. I want to dive right into the topic and today's special guest. So the topic is relationships. Now, I ask you, are you in one? And then let me ask you another question. Are you sure you want to be in one? And my guest today is the author of this book right here. So it's relationships. Are you sure you want one? Joining me on the show is Simone Melissus. And Simone, in addition to being an author of not just this book, but a few books, she's also an entrepreneur, a creator, an international speaker. She is a business and life mentor and yes i could go on and on about simone but i think it's better that she shares her journey and her advice with you so simone welcome it's great to have you on my show thank you thank you so much for having me here yeah no it, it's great and i i know you mentioned that you're coming to us from australia so thank you for being up bright and early <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome Awesome. So I always like to kick it off with that first question. You know, I, I introduced you as the author, the speaker, the creator, the entrepreneur. How did you kind of get down this path? And did you always feel like this is what you were going to do? Uh, you know what, I'm going to say no, I definitely didn't see that this would be the path that I would be living. Uh, but what there was an energy behind it that was the same. From a really young age, I wanted to change the way people looked at the world and I wanted to change the way they were with each other. So I'm going to say it was more that demand that I was making, like, how can I be this? How can I be an inspiration for people to change something in the world? So, and along with that came many different things. I mean, one of the first things I did was just travel all over the world. When I was 19, I left home for three years and just oh, that's traveled. Amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, and so many people, you know, judged it and projected at me that I couldn't settle down and everything, but I knew that I needed to discover the world. I, I wanted to look at more and see more and what was going on. And I guess now of what contribution I could be to the planet. That's really interesting because I know travel just broadens our perspective and our horizon. And as you said about, you know, this energy and change, did you feel that that is really what propelled you to, was that um, the energy to become an entrepreneur, the energy to be someone who does the business and the life mentoring? So I mean, I'd started a business many, many, many years ago called Good Vibes For You. And it was all of these things that I created, like I'd have merchandise, you know, t-shirts and stickers and magnets, etc. And I had sayings written on them that I perceived that if someone read them, I was hoping and praying that maybe it would change their life a little bit. It's, it's be inspired to know that there was something different. For me, I used to walk around the planet and I would see people choosing, you know, trauma and drama and yeah. it didn't make sense to me. I was, and you know what? There was this one day when I lived in London and I got a, uh, one of those big red double decker buses and I didn't have much money at the time. So I, I was entertaining myself and I went from one end of London to the other and I had a notebook and I wrote down all of these different, you know, uh, inspirations that I wanted to create. But the one thing I noticed was when I looked out the window, 
whether I was going through, you know, a rich era, area, a poor area, you know, um, white, black, Pakistani, you know, Jewish, whatever. It didn't matter what color, race, creed anyone was. I was like, I don't see anyone happy. Oh. So I was like, what would it take for the world to be happy and stop doing this trauma and drama with each other and actually start to be happy? So that was a huge inspiration for me. So I never looked at it as, you know, I'm going to do classes or I'm going to be an entrepreneur or I'm going to write a book. It was just, it was this energy, like I said, that was, that was such a demand in my world to be that as an inspiration for others, however that looked. Happy. I love that. So you mentioned yeah. the trauma and the drama, and there's a lot of trauma and drama in relationships. So I'm pivoting over to your book. Um, let's talk about your book a little bit. Even the title is just different. Right? <laughs> so to tell us, how, how is this book different than the normal book that walks somebody through, you know, this is the relationship that you should have, or, you know, these are great ways to get to a relationship. How, how is this different? Well, I actually, I think it's important to know that I actually wrote it with my ex and we were together for eight years. And so many people used to say to us, ask us questions about being in relationships. For eight years, and even when we broke up, we still never had a fight and we never argued. And they were like, how do you guys create this? And because we were doing seminars, so we thought, all right, let's do one on relationships. So that's how it started. And the book has a lot of really great tools if you desire to create a great relationship. And some of them you will hate. But the thing is, we use these tools and they're all from Access Consciousness. We use the tools and they worked. And we've... We, tried to create the book to be quite vulnerable. There's a lot of stories in there about, about what we chose and what we didn't choose. And there was this one guy from India once and he said to me, Simone, he said, I can't believe you wrote all of this stuff in this book. He said, I can't even talk to my wife about it and you printed it in a book. <laughs> but what if there was like nothing to hide? Right. So we wrote this book and it, it, like I said, it has a lot of good tools in it if you desire to create a good relationship. But when we were naming the book, we wanted people to be in question and that's why it is a question because, and I don't know about you, Deirdre, but there's so many of my, you know, girlfriends for so many years when oh, I, I really love a relationship. I'd love a relationship when they didn't have one. And one of the, um, the facts that I would always point out is if you are not in a relationship, then you don't desire one because you create everything like in your life and the way your life is right today is what you've created. That's what you're choosing. If you choose to be in a relationship, you'll create it. You'll find one. So that's why we wanted to put it into a question relationship. Are you sure you want one? Cause you get to choose. That's really, it doesn't have to be wrong if you're single. Yeah. I mean, for years and years and years, it's like, Oh my God, they're single. They can't find the one. It's like, now what's wrong with you? It's like, no, it's okay. You can choose relationship or not choose it. What if your choice was okay? Right. It's almost like all of your, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, if you're not in a relationship right now, it's because all of the past ways that you've been feeling it, because if you really were geared toward it, you would have those thoughts and feelings and be more apt to have one. You, you choose, it's your choice. Yeah. And I mean, I, we've been, now we've been broken up for, I think about two years. And at first I was really distraught, did that like, oh my goodness, you know? And then I looked at it because Brendan actually broke the relationship up with me. And then I went, oh, you know what? He's correct. We started maintaining our relationship and it was nothing about creating something greater. And to me, if you're going to choose to be in a relationship, make it a great one. Like right. it should be with someone who is contributing to you and you create at least 20 times more together than what you would alone. So for me, the last two years, it's like, I'm single and I, at the, in this moment, I have no desire to, you know, uh, live with somebody else, <laughs> go on dates, sure, right. but not someone move into my house. Like I love living in this house on my own. I'm having a great time. So this is really interesting. Let, let's talk a little bit about some of the topics in the book, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, the notion of the perfect relationship. And I do think a lot of people, we talk about the honeymoon phase. So maybe you could just shed some light on why no relationship will ever be perfect. 
you know, eyes wide open. <laughs> yes. Well, first of all, if you look at perfect, perfect is actually a judgment. Like if you say, you know, I've got the perfect girlfriend or if I, I've got the perfect husband. It's like the second you say that the perfect husband, then you have just created this place where you are not willing to see everything that they will be. And what if you could see the good, the bad and the ugly with no judgment? That's a really key piece for me is no judgment. You've got to be in allowance of what the other person is choosing or not choosing as the case may be. Right. I mean, one of the things I always say is like, if you want to train someone, get a puppy, not a man. <laughs> it's like, you know, let him be. Let him change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that so, is a, a frequent, um, sometimes going into a relationship thinking you're going to change somebody. It didn't matter if you were 18 or 25 or 35 and whatever age you can't, you can't change someone. You have to be in acceptance. Yeah. It's, it's actually unkind. I mean, if you look at, 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 if someone was looking at you saying, Oh, you're great. Only if you change this, right. you'd be better. And it's like, it's a judgment. So what if someone was just really grateful to have someone in front of them and be like, hi. And you mentioned the, the honeymoon phase. I, I think this is hilarious because if you look at most relationships, the first eight weeks, you can barely get enough of each other. It's like, right. you just, you know, it's like, yes, you want to see them all the time, etc. So what I would ask is that you keep, Keep asking each day, you know, what would it take to create this relationship to be greater than it was yesterday? Because otherwise you start to fall into these, I know, these places where it's like you become complacent rather than what if every day it was like this brand new relationship, but you have to create it. You've got to work at a relationship. Yeah. It's not, you know, I mean, I think people, you know, oh, it's like, you know, fairy tales. No, it's not. No. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm going to say, I don't, I don't personally think the one exists. Uh, I, we were not bred to be, you know, with, you know, like there's animals out there like penguins who pick someone for, for life. And it's like, that's not really in our DNA. You may have a great relationship with someone that has lasted a really, really long time, but I'm going to say time doesn't make a great relationship. You know, when you hear people say, Oh, they've been together for 42 years. Right. And then, and then people go, Oh, that must be a great relationship. No, my parents were together a really long time and it was not a great relationship. Right. I was with Brendan, my ex, for eight years and it was a great relationship. So time doesn't make it great. You create it to be great. That's a really good point. What about your point about sharing is not caring? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I was just before I came on here, I was actually just talking to Brendan, who is living in Texas now. And I said, this is my new tool that I'm practicing just for me, just for fun. Don't tell anyone. And he said, Simone, he said, you'll be the first woman on planet earth to do that. If you do, <laughs> and I said, so talk to me in a month and let's see where we're at. <laughs> Cause so many women, you know, have this place where they want to share everything. They want to tell their partner everything. Sure. And as soon as you talk to start talking to a man too, he looks at you as though, what do I have to fix? What do I have to be for you? So if you do desire to share with your partner, my say straight off, hey, honey, you don't have to actually fix this for me. I just want to talk about it. Because a man just goes, gets that Into energy. Of life. He want, yeah, he wants to take care of you. Right. If you want to share, get a girlfriend and share with the girlfriend. And, okay. and also, I want, the other side of that too is men need space. Right. They and need to give food. a man <laughs> yeah, they do. They need a cave. We literally, in the house that I'm living in now, we had one of our rooms downstairs at one stage. We called it the man cave. Mm -hmm. And Brendan set it up the way he wanted to set it up so that he could have this space to go to. Now, the interesting thing is he never, ever went down there. And eventually he said, you know what? I'm not really using the man cave. What if we turn it into a gym? <laughs> All right. But he had that, the choice. Good. Yeah. But he had that choice. That's really good. Um, you know, on the note of what you said about fix it, if you understand that um, you know your your male partner is looking at whatever you're sharing is oh I better jump in and fix it, that he would get frustrated if he couldn't. So if you yeah. just wanted to share and you didn't want him to and you didn't have that understanding, it could be very frustrating, and that's where you know you could end up in an argument over something that was just meant to be shared. 
Yeah, well, most women like to talk things out. Like, and I know I do. When I say something out loud and I start to talk about it, I get clearer for me. And most men don't do that. They don't process the same. Like, you'll notice a lot of men will do, like, they might read a book or play video games or mm -hmm. watch TV or, you know, do something, like I said before, that is giving them space. They process in a really different way. And women like to talk about it. So, and neither is right and neither is right. wrong. It's just if you way. recognize it, yeah, if you recognize it, then you can be with that and not go to the wrongness of when the male or female is not doing what you've already decided they should do. And that's where you come to argument. <laughs> exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So what about, um, just real quick on the note of trust, you did write about trust in the book. So how important yeah. is that, that bond, that trust that you have with one another? Okay, so here's the piece of information is trust the way we write about it is trust that your partner will be and do what they will be and do. So as an example, it's like, you know, if you meet somebody and they always leave the toilet seat up, okay? It's like, don't try and train them to put the toilet seat down trust that that's what they will choose okay mm -hmm. so that you know that that's who they be and so that's what you can count on yeah exactly okay. don't that's it's not this is not on. trust as in blind faith like they will always yeah. do this for me no not the romantic notion sorry <laughs> it's the it's the trust that that's that's who they be and it's like so one of the, we talk about it as the five elements of intimacy so you actually have trust gratitude vulnerability, allowance, and honor. And I've got to say, one of the things that I did many, many years ago, I realized I had to have those five elements of intimacy with myself before I could have them with anybody else. Mm. So each day I worked on that too. It was like, you know, every, I was sort of destroying and uncreating all the places and all the judgments that I wasn't willing to be those five elements of intimacy with me. Because if you have that with you, then what you can have with somebody else is far greater than this, you know, this is my other half or this person completes me. Nobody should ever complete you. They should add and contribute to what you be. Nice. Like you don't need anyone. Yeah. Right. You want to be whole yourself yeah. and then people can just enhance and, and bring out the yes. best. <laughs> yes, exactly. Absolutely. So what about, I mean, you've had a lot of success. You're, you're writing books, you're speaking, you know, what about your challenges? Our, our audience loves to hear, you know, what, what's, what's a challenge or how do you approach a challenge to give them some kind of um, insights behind it? Okay. Uh, so one of my like golden tools that I would use is try and do one hour a day and one day a week, do something that's just for me. Because I am, I mean, you know, one of the books I've also written is called Joy of Business. So, and I love business and I love creating and I love, you know, working with different projects. So sometimes, it, you know, you're just in that and you need to have time for you and whatever that may be. So it's like one hour a day, one day a week and see if you can choose something that is just for you. And it could be anything. Like it might be, you know, having a glass of wine and watching Netflix. It could be going for a walk on the beach or you know, sleeping in, having a bath, whatever. But that do all sounds so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, yeah but, but how often do we not actually nurture ourselves? Right. And so if you give yourself, and it, you could do three days, whatever you choose, but that one hour a day, knowing that that's just for you, it's not for anyone or anything else, then you start to be, what I notice is, I start to be more present with myself and I start to have more of a sense of peace. So that when there are things that show up, you're not, you don't have this frantic energy about you. It's more, you're clearer. You have a clearer head. So challenges look different when you take this hour a day to kind of be good to yourself just for me. You're really, you're, you're getting your presence, you're calm. Anything can come by you. But if you were in a frantic mode, it would be so much more difficult to tackle yeah, you, an obstacle. You create it into your own telenovela and that right. is not required. Like it's interesting uh, and relaxation. Like, yeah. and just recently I uh, 
Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness, was talking to me and he said, he kept, he kept saying to me for years, I've worked with him for 19 years and there's, you know, various situations and he'd say, Simone, relax. And the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and here, you know, I'm, I'm at home, I've been home with COVID since March. So not with COVID, but because of because, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's changed my life a lot. And I realized the other day, every time he says relax, I went, I don't actually know what relaxation is for me. So I've been asking questions about it. And when you be in question, you will allow yourself to have more awareness. And I'm, I'm so lucky. I have this beautiful, beautiful beach across the road from me. So I've been going on long walks and asking myself questions. And one of the things I realized was relaxation has no judgment. So if I was judging nothing and expecting nothing, then it, it gave, again, it gave my whole body and being this huge sense of peace. Because if you have no judgment, and also the other thing that showed up too was time was irrelevant. Because how often do we get frantic when we put time into the equation? And in truth, time is a creation. It's like, right. you know, we are the source of creation of everything. So we get to choose what that looks like. And if you don't buy into all the projections and expectations of this reality, and you, you have this like bigger um, energy of knowing like you as an infinite being can perceive no being receive anything then you relax into everything you'll know you'll know like that what next I what do I need to choose next what you're saying I absolutely believe because when I am calm when I feel refreshed when I'm sort of in tune and aligned creative um, insights things just come to me where yeah. if I was in a different kind of mode and trying to focus on something, it's not going to come. <laughs> so it yeah. really does make a difference. Absolutely. So I like this that you said that you're walking and you're, you're asking questions. Um, just a quick, if you can, an aha moment, just a big moment or even maybe an uh-oh moment that you can recall that really just kind of stuck with you as an important life or learning lesson? So I was earlier on and one of the things when I met Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, and it was one of the first seminars I ever went to with him and he said, what if the purpose of life was to have fun? And I remember sitting there thinking, are you kidding me? Do you know how many friends I've sat around with, with a coffee or a glass of wine, you know, talking about the purpose of life and it was always about helping people or helping animals or helping, helping, helping. And it had this energy of everything that I had to give. And what he started talking to me about was, what if you were here to receive? And I was like, it, it was just such a head trip mm -hmm. for me because I thought that I was here to give and I had to help. And to flip that around, and if you even just for indulge in it for a second. Absolutely. If you were here... For what if life was, uh, you know, what if the purpose of life was to have fun and you were to receive, like even look at the energy of when you start receiving from the planet. I mean, the earth is so willing to give to you. Yep. And when you receive and in that receiving, you allow others to gift as well. And there's always this energy going out when you're giving, but what if you actually received as well? So oh, I started yeah. looking at that for years. What if the purpose of life was to have fun? Yeah, I mean, like, I just feel like if you get into the receiving mode. Once you receive, automatically you give. It's, it's like a flow. Well, there's like a gifting and receiving. And I, I see so many people do, you know, like this give and take, you know, oh, someone gave me this, so you take it. And then you, what have you got to give back in return rather than just the gifting and receiving. And if you look at it in anything, when you give something to someone, you know, when you give someone a present and they receive it, you're like, it's so awesome for you because right. like, it makes Yay. you feel good too. Yeah. Yeah. But when someone just takes it and doesn't receive, there's this, I don't know, this like, you know, separation between right. you and there's a vulnerability. Again, it goes back to that five elements of intimacy. There's a vulnerability in receiving something, anything like yeah. someone offering to buy you dinner and you're like, thank you. Not, Oh, thank you. I'll get the next, you know, meal. No. Right. What if you never planned for that? that give and take, what if you're always in gifting and receiving? Really different reality with everyone. And can I tell you, animals, are, they pick up on that. 
instantaneously <laughs> if you're in that gifting and receiving mode. I did not know that. <laughs> that is an interesting tidbit. Wow. Well, I can't even believe I'm going to ask you. you. You've been giving advice the whole way through, but this is the parting advice question just to share with women worldwide listeners and anybody who's watching us on YouTube. Um, what sort of advice can you give to people about relationships and, and being in this mode of receiving and just finding this joy? Uh, come out of judgment of yourself and the rightness and the wrongness. Uh, most people would rather be right than be free. And if you stop trying to prove something and stop trying to go to the rightness of your point of view or judge that you're wrong, you will have a sense of freedom that will gift you far more than what you've ever perceived possible. I think that's excellent. Stop judging. Advice. Yeah. Right, because, um, and stop proving. Like, I'd rather be happy than... Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just... Yeah. And that's something I'm working on all the time. Yeah. Like, it's no, like you have to unraveling. Work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, last question, Simone. Super easy. Where can people find out more about your work, you, your books, or can they go? Uh, I guess two websites would be great. It's the simonemillises.com uh, and also accessconsciousness.com because there's many, many different websites. <laughs> Excellent. So if you go there, Instagram is, you know, Simone Millises, very easy. So. And they can find your book on Simone Millises? They can find my book. And you can also go to um, relationship, relationship, are you sure you want one as well, .com. And there's a whole lot of, we do this uh, no sugar coating blogs and things like that, my ex and I. So we hopefully they're funny. Some of them are funny, I think. Awesome. So there's a whole lot of free videos on there too. <laughs> I think it's fantastic that you and Brendan wrote this book together. Very cool. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your journey, your insights, all of your advice. We so appreciate everything that you've shared and your time as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. And thank you to all of you for tuning in, for showing up and for being here every single week. As I said before, keep the feedback coming, the conversations going. If you want to chat with me, I'm always on Twitter at Deep Breckenridge. And uh, also, you know, if you're listening and you want to watch the shows, you can go to the Dear to Breckenridge YouTube channel and subscribe. Okay, everybody, till our next episode, be safe, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.